And first of all, I'd like to apologise that our microphone system isn't working today. Um, so we have one microphone, uh, which we're going to have to pass around. What I've asked the committee to do is project their voices as much as they can. And if anybody has any trouble in hearing, if you can just raise your hands, um, then uh, we'll get the microphone to that person so that they can hear them. We're in the process of um, replacing them, so um, for the next municipal year, I'm sure it'll be more Okay, so um, welcome to the committee. My name is Councillor Anita Leach, and I'm the chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour, and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table to here tonight are, to my immediate right is the council solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council's planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officer who will present the application this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications for evening and to make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a possible <coughs> petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. When they have one minute left, I will let them know. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or the agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representation. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application the Ward Councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the Ward Councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. If a slight visit is requested and approved by the committee, the matter will not be discussed any further this evening. Okay, could I ask members if they can approve the minutes on pages 1 to 10, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Happy with that. Okay. agenda this evening that uh, we don't have uh, a judicial uh, review update. Um, that's purely on the basis of that there's not really an update from the last uh, update, but I'll just refresh people's memories on that before we go into the meeting. Um, the position to date is as stated at the last meeting. Members will be aware that with regards to the, to the judicial review, application relating to Thornton Mile Hotel, the High Court made an order on the 23rd of March 2018 that the time for filing claim for be extended, that permission be granted to proceed with the claim and that filing permission reference AWP stroke 10 stroke 0.045 dated the 20th of December 2011 be quashed. Members have been sent a copy of the judgment of the court Officers are meeting with council tomorrow to consider the implications of the decision and an update report will be called to the next meeting of the police. So, so that, that meeting it wasn't um, planned, so we, that, that's the update of it. Yeah. The to have yeah. If I could just clarify that at the last committee, that that decision of the court hadn't been made public. So that, that has been made public, that the judgments has been handed down since the last meeting. So that the, the announcement is to be members of today is on the current position. And as, as, as uh, the chair has said, a further report will be going to the next meeting. Thank you very much. Um, are there any declarations of interest? <coughs> Are there any requests for sign visits? 
No. Okay, agenda item four, which is land at Conway Street, Birkenhead. Head. Uh, this item has been deferred. Uh, so we won't be discussing that this evening. So we move on to agenda item five, which is pages 23 to 28 in your packs. Um, it's uh, 147 Holby Road. Uh, could we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is for several extensions to an existing dwelling that consists of two story side and rear extensions uh, to the east of the site, single story extensions to the west of the site, single story to the rear, um, and a three car, one half story garage to the front of the site. Um, the site is a detached house in a large garden, which is a common conservation area. The house and plot are fairly typical of houses in this part of the conservation area. It's about a 1930s house. Um, and the house is set back quite far from the road with a, 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 screen, a tree screen in front of it, which are on the beach street, but in the front. Um, the house isn't listed, but in the conservation area and place of government, it's, well, it's confusing, it's, it's down as a category B dwelling and also as a category C dwelling. Uh, category B is a something that was contributed strongly to the character of conservation area. Character C is one that was contributed to the conservation area. So it's kind of somewhere between the two. Um, in line with the relevant policies, extensions can be approved on housing in this area, provided they um, don't harm the character of the area and the amenity of the neighbouring properties. So the bulk of the extensions are two story and then to the side of the rear, adjacent to the right of the screen. Um, they will be set just within three metres of this boundary. Uh, there will be no first floor windows on the side boundary, two habitable rooms, it's just two on suite by three windows. Given that 151 is some 24 metres away from the boundary for this side, on the, on the, the almost three metres to the extensions, we feel that this is, is within the normal parameters of the house extensions acceptability and there should be no loss of amenity to the neighbouring property. Um, on the other side of the property is a single storey extension, which partly replaces an existing single storey extension, uh, but it's, it's slightly longer. This again is, is in the region of 12 metres away from the boundary of the adjacent property, 145, uh, and it's felt that this will not have any adverse impact on this property as a single storey. Uh, there is also a pool extension at the rear of the property, which kind of sits in the middle of all the extensions. Um, in addition to this, there's a Three car garage proposed. This would be in front of the existing dwelling, but not as far forward as 145 on the left. Um, it's a fairly substantial building, it's one and a half storey, and there's a, a bedroom proposed in the roof space. Um, again, it's set between four and five metres off the boundary with the adjacent property. The other side of that boundary is the, the driveway which leads to the garage at the back of 145. So, again, it's felt that there's no impact on neighbours in terms of community, loss of life, and everything. Um, because the extensions are set quite far back from the road, um, again, we feel that the impact on the conservation area is negligible because there is a tree screen there which will screen the building as it is now and as it will be extended. Um, in terms of design, the proposals follow the, sort of the, the style of the, the, the building that exists on site at the moment, and it's felt that the sympathetic extensions and the control materials are to be appropriate <coughs> with a, a condition which will only be. Um, it is recommended for approval on that basis, and there is a lot of application. Thank you. As we do have a qualified petition, would the petition like to come forward to speak on this? <coughs> Now, I'm going to provide, the, provide you with this microphone oh, okay. next. So, uh, just, just to let you know that you do have five minutes to speak, and when you have <coughs> one minute left, I'll indicate that you've got one minute left. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. I asked some photographs to circulate if possible. I was, that's fine. I was asked to ask you if that was possible. That's fine. Okay. Yes. Circulate them before you ask. Yeah, no, thank you. Are they all the same? Yeah, we're all 
Therefore, the development, by virtue of its height, size, sighting and design, would have a detrimental impact on the immunity of neighbouring properties and harm the character and appearance of the house and the Caldy Conservation Area, contrary to policies HS11, CH2 and CH11 of the World Council's UDP. And as such, we respectfully ask members of the Planning Committee to refuse the application. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time.
Okay, and I'm going to open this up to uh, committee now for any questions or comments. David. Uh, thank you, Chair. Would it be possible to have a site plan of the existing building and the one that is proposed so we can see the difference between the two footprints and the impact on the neighbours of that change of footprint size? Thank you, Chair. Can you just explain, is that the, the new one? And um, we need really to compare it, don't we, with the existing one? Right, three, Chair. Um, I'm afraid to get rid of the screen is beyond my skills, but this is the proposed extensions. If you look to the uh, right of the screen, um, this area here is extension. This is two-story extension here. This to the rear is swimming pools in the story extension. This is, to the side here is also extension. And this is the garage. Um, so, so the existing building stops around about the point where my arrow is on the screen now. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, that's condition six, if you want to check that. Okay, are there any other questions for anybody and points to make? Kathy? Um, I'll just make one comment on the, um, the right side of the proposed extension for the boundary line is next to 151. Is it going to be proposed once again? Because from what I can see there, the extension will be taking up most of the land. Because I presume they have mature trees that can also be taken down. Extension. I just wonder how much we sure you could get back there and what's the difference between the end of the extension at its closest point around the Okay. Through your chair. At the closest point it's just under three meters, so about two hundred meters. So yes, you could get shorter in landscaping and there's a condition that requires landscaping to be supplied. So sorry, that is covered by condition six that we mentioned already. Yes. Okay, if there aren't any other comments, the officer's recommendation is to approve this subject to the conditions listed. Do I want to move that? Please second that. Joe, all those in favour of approval? Those against? Okay, that planning application is carried. We can now move to agenda item 6, which is 277 Telegraph Road, and it's pages 29 to 36 in your packs. Could we have a presentation on the road, please? <coughs> Chair. This application is for the demolition of the existing house on site and the erection of the building which will contain five flats. The proposed building is three storey with the upper floor taking part of the roof plate in the roof space. Uh, the site, as you can see, is currently occupied by a two storey detached house which is located to one side of the site. Uh, the site is elevated above laurel banks which are to the rear of the site uh, by quite a significant degree because it's a former quarry. Um, so the existing building is situated near to 279 on the north of the site. Uh, the proposed building for five flats occupies a, a larger footprint and extends across the width of the site. This was an application that was due to come to committee previously, but there were concerns, on the site visit, there were concerns that the plans had been measured incorrectly. Um, so we've received amended plans which, which now reflect the proposal on the site and have reduced the size of the building that's proposed. Um, so the more accurately shows the relationship between 279, which is to the north of the application site. Um, so the layout is for two three, three bedroom flats on each floor, with a fifth flat in the roof space. Um, Eleven parking spaces are proposed to the front of the site, and the garden to the rear. Uh, the design of the building is fairly simple and contemporary, and has a mix of render and sandstone and timber cladding. Uh, the rear elevation has enclosed balconies, which are enclosed by the vehicle walls, to views of the rear of the site. Um, the rear elevation is approximately seven metres closer to the boundary of the site than the existing building. Um, however, um, an interface distance, the interface distance which would be result from the proposed building to the property below, notwithstanding it still exceeds our normal interface distance. Um, and also because of the difference in levels, it's more like the building is more so we don't cross the buildings below rather than down to the gardens and windows because it's such a difference in height. Um, the, it's thought that the proposal complies with all our policies and is recommended for approval. Thank you. There is a petition. Is the lead petitioner here to speak on this? No, would the board house like to speak? Sorry, is, is, does the lead petitioner want to speak? The gentleman raised his hand there. Okay, would you like to come forward then, please, Lord Councillor? If you can, just state your name and then. Um... <coughs> 
Councillor Andrew Hodgson has the award. Yourself? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm all Mr. Curry Favors. So uh, Steve goes and we'll go to a suitable award still afterwards. Um, I'll, have you passed the photograph around, please? Has everyone has a copy? Yes. I'll speak about those. <coughs> um, I'd like to thank the members for visiting the site. Uh, since then, as mentioned, the, the plans have been trimmed, but not fundamentally changed. There are still, they, they, they are still for a three-storey building, whereas I believe any building there should be no higher than two and a half storeys. The neighbours' difficulty with the plans for development of 277 are not concerned with the extension to the width of the proposed building in the direction of number 275 but with the extra six metres in height and the proposed projections into the rear garden. <laughs> Measured from the rear wall of the existing house, projections amount to 3.4 metres and 7.5 metres respectively. There can be no doubt that in, see they are in seeking to maximise the value of the plot, the recent minor amendment plan still stress the size of the building beyond what is reasonable for this site. The Council's guidance SPD2 lays down the local objectives. It says, the main objective of local planning policy is to ensure that new development relates well with the surrounding property and to ensure that there is no detrimental change to the character of that area. It continues, in recent years there has been an increased demand from property developers for self-contained flat development. This has led to the concern that the character of Woodall's established residential areas is being eroded by the pressure for the development. And the demolition of unlisted buildings, the loss of landscape gardens, overdevelopment, the impact of traffic, and the loss of local heritage, Telegraph Road is largely like the family detached houses apart from the close, apart from close to the town centre. The supplementary planning document has Therefore, be prepared to provide additional advice on the design and location of new flat developments. <coughs> the application form states that the area of the site is 822, 822.5 and a half square metres. This would be to be an optimistic figure as it's been calculated at 714 square metres. Even at 822.5 square metres, five flats represents 60 per hectare. The Council's guidance SPD2 says the proposal is in excess of 50 dwellings per hectare beyond 400 metres from the key town centre would be unlikely to receive planning permission. This guidance is aimed at the development of 10 or more flats, but this is already the third such development in this area, all in close proximity. Should the Council's policy be bypassed if an area is developed cumulatively rather than in one go? Even if it's decided that the Council's FPD2 guidance on flat locations to be waived, there are other aspects of this development which also point to being excessive. SPD2 says the whole facades of infill development that will project beyond the rear building line in areas of uniform development, such as established house types of the same kind, is unlikely to be permitted. It says in cases where there's a variety in the building line, an overall average should be determined to set the limits of an acceptable footprint. And in this case, the rear wall of the development would exceed the rear building line by seven and a half metres measured from the rear wall of the existing house, which you can see on the photographs which we've been circulating, uh, the building line and the separation between 277 and 279. The result of this is that yet another SPT2 guidance will not be achieved. And the committee report quotes SPD2, which says, adequate landscape garden space should be provided for the exclusive use of residents. This should be accessible to each flat and have a size, shape and location to be useful to the occupiers. As a general guide, developers should ensure that at least one third of the whole site remains available as private landscape communal areas. And this proposal falls far short of one third of the site for private communal areas. It should be possible to provide a design on this plot which does provide adequate garden space. And turning to the scale of the building, the committee report says that the proposed building is a three-storey block and that the development is similar to nearby flat developments in terms of numbers of units, scale and appearance of the building. 
It says there is a similar scale bill in the 271 Telegraph Road. This earlier block is officially and properly described as a two and a half storey apartment block. And its ridge height is more than two metres lower than what is proposed in 277, both measured from the respective formation levels. The approved plan for 271 provides for just the same number of flats as the proposed 277 with the lower ridge height and was contained within the building line. The previous block number 269, what we know as even lower, and just two storey, and is again contained within the building line. The previous blocks may not be as upmarked as they are proposed, but they show what can be achieved if due consideration is paid to the context of the design. And in the case of the existing properties nearby, along this side of Telegraph Road, that the rear building line can be clearly seen to be more or less parallel to the line of the road. I have circulated a photograph which shows the existing rear building lines at number 269, 281, and the separation between 277 and 279. The SBT says the development should not result in significant loss of daylight or sunlight in neighbouring properties, or be visually overbearing the dominant when viewed from an adjoining property. However, as a consequence of the scale of the proposed building and its projection beyond the rear building line, it would dominate its neighbours at 279 and put them in a shadow. The proposed side wall of 277 is to be three storeys in height and circa 60 metres higher than the existing house and will replace the existing one storey garage. The separation between 279 and 277 is said to be only 4.537 by 4.852 metres. And we also advise the proposed building will extend 1.593 metres to its first rate projection and some 5.881 metres to the second projection beyond the rear corner of the conservatory window of 279. I'm finishing now. Whilst we'd accept that new homes for people are needed, in our opinion, it is family houses that need an actual, not more flats. We noticed that our country over 50 unsold flats in Hesel on right move sites alone. Previous projects have shown that the proposed number of flats can be achieved with a building on a smaller scale and a smaller footprint whilst complying, complying with SPD2. And although the amended plans for 277 reduced the size of the initial proposal of the site slightly, the increased height of 277 on the sunny side of 279 and the seven and a half metre extension of the rear garden from the rear wall of the existing house goes far beyond what is necessary or reasonable for this site. It is an overdevelopment in the conflict with HS41 related to the scale of the building HS2, related to the character of the area at HSV11, related to adequate garden space, and it will increase traffic on an already very busy telegraph road. I would ask the members to refuse this application. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Andrew.
The difference here with Haswell is that when a residential property, a full normal family home, is demolished to build flats, that's irreversible. You can put an HMO back to one dwelling unit, you won't put a block of flats back to one dwelling unit. And so I would ask the committee to look at whether or not in this instance particularly, with all the different dimensions, that this, in this instance there is an overdevelopment of the site. Councillor Hodgson did mention about the building line, that the roof is going up another 18 feet. I mean, sometimes when you look at meters when we're older, we don't really get that into context. But 18, 20 feet taller and 21 feet further back from the next property, in my estimation, is an overdevelopment. And I don't think the site is commensurate with the area. There are other flats, but further down towards Hesper Town Centre, and they are two storey or two and a half storey, and they fit on the same footprint as was there before. If nobody else has anything to say, I do have words for a few of the Does anybody have any other comments? Yeah. Yeah. Can I yeah. Yeah. confirmation on the separation distances of the new three-story uh, apartment block and the existing building? Can you just confirm those separation distance? distances? So the existing um, property as it is now, what the um, what the separation distances are and what are going to be the separation distances on the new three story apartment block. Three each uh, Do when you say separation distance, do you mean to properties at the back or the other side of the road or to the adjacent property here. So to be so two seven seven two seven nine. Yeah. Two seven seven two seven nine. Right. At the moment, um, the existing dwelling, as you can see it sits to one end of the site. So it's um, in the region, it's just over four metres. Yeah, so you've got four metres between 279 and the application site. And the application site. And the application site, or the existing building on the application site. Yeah. The proposed building on the site is a distance of between 4.5 and 4.8 metres. It is. It, it's comparable to the interface distances and all those. But obviously, the other side of the site, there's quite a big gap between the house and the property on the other side, um, and that reduces to um, 3.5 metres between the two buildings when the other buildings are. Okay, I've got um, a host of people now I want to speak. So I'll take Steve first, and then uh, Pat, then David, and then I'll go back to Kathy. Okay? Well, I'll shout out to you. But my question is, though, to get on the site that I'm aware of the site situation uh, and, and the sort of slogan of the situation, and I believe that uh, some members on the site have said that that somehow mitigates the move from two floors to, uh, to, to, to three sort of uh, three stories and two story. I just wonder, because it couldn't make the site exist, but then when we went on site, there's a few comments on, on, on that particular aspect as well. I'm just going to see a section of the stage so that we can see that. 